Hi everybody. Well, got a bit of a mess up here. I had started up cutting a tree down and I was limbing some branches. And uh, I hit something the wrong way and it popped the chain right off. Which is not an uncommon thing. So we'll slap that back on and we'll get back to work. If I was more of a saw man, I probably could explain a bunch of things about what's going on, but I'm not. All I can tell you is this is the sprocket right there. And this chain has to stay on those grooves and go into that sprocket like that. Stay in the groove of the bar drops back in and then usually quite often this thing here this is a this is how you tighten it you turn this and when you turn this it turns it slides this long you can see that that slides back and forth and that tightens up the, the chain on the bar but when the chain is tight and it comes off like that you have to release it a little bit and then it drops in place and then you put the night nuts back on slightly and then you're able to tighten the chain back up. A lot of people have different ideas on how tight they like their chain. I, on my saws I like them fairly snug. Used to be you wanted to be a pull out so you can just see the tips of them but I don't on the ends of them right there. But I like them even tighter than that these days. But there again, I'm no I'm no saw man and uh, people can do a lot better job of explaining the exact ways, the proper way to do it. All I'm doing is what I've always done type of thing. You know what, we do, we get in these ideas that we've done something for a long time and it's always worked for us. And we forget the fact that we still aren't necessarily doing it the right way. And there's people that could still teach us how to do a heck of a lot better than we're doing the same way we've done for our whole lives and yet there's still better ways. So um, that's something we all have to keep in mind no matter what we're doing, that uh, even though we think we have a way that works really good, quite often somebody has a better, better way of doing it and it's, it's best to be open-minded because it's amazing how much more you can learn when you're open-minded and uh, pick up some new tricks here and there. I think a word for that might be humility. Say what? Humility, oh, like humility. Oh, okay. Yep, could be. So I'm gonna get around this corner, tie the horses, and go cut us a tree. Okay, so I'm gonna tie, leave the horses here. I've got something I wanna show you. And uh, it's, it's something I, I, I guess I would say I'm not extremely proud of. Um, but as a, when you're logging, there's times and things and places that you do that you just can't help. And uh, I really like using horses and I feel that horses compared to machinery are, are tend to be easier on the forest, less damage to the forest, less damage to the trees that are left, less damage to the ground, but yet horses can still do damage. And here's a good example right here. You have that big root system and there's a big root from this tree. Now as you can see this tree is not marked. So and behind us this tree is and so we have to protect this tree from getting hurt. Now, by doing what we just did and by scuffing up that root, it 
may affect it. I'm hoping it won't. Um, I'd like to hear your hear your thoughts and comments on that. Even um, it'd be some foresters out there that would tell me differently, and I'm sure John would tell me too. I know you don't want to hurt the cambium layer, which is the exterior land of the butt. But even that, we're really close up into the butt, and I don't know. It's just one of those things. Um, in a lot of ways, I don't even want to show this because it shows damage to the to a tree that we really wanted to protect. Um, but these things happen. I mean, I don't care who you are. You're going to have a situation like this because even if I wasn't turning this corner and just coming straight, I'd still be hitting this root this root right here because it's so close to the ground. There's just no way um, I could have got around that without scarring that up some. I think I wouldn't be surprised if a forester was here and he was looking the situation over it now. He'd say, well, let's cut this one and leave that one because that one's not damaged at all. But it's very rare when I damage a tree like this and, and hopefully, and I highly doubt this will really even affect the tree too much. But let me know your comments. What do you think? How many of those roots like that do you think that tree has right there? Like four of them? Oh my goodness, lots of them. But like big, huge ones like that. That's like a main one, but even so, it's you not. Another, you got a main one right here too. Yeah. It's just, you pull but it's... up the ball of, of a stump ball, there's just tons and tons of roots. Yeah. So, but every one of those roots carry water back up into the tree and nutrients. So I know that it's important not to hurt them. But I guess, like I said, I don't care who you are when you're logging. You're going to do some damage. And the idea is to keep it to the least as possible. If, uh, if I had gone to Paul Smith College as a teenager, and learned about this stuff, I would have a lot more to say. So I guess I'm putting a little bit of a plug in there for Paul Smith College. So you young guys that have any interest in forestry, this might be the place to go for you. We sure know quite a few uh, foresters that have come from here. As we progress in these videos, we hope to get even some of the teachers that are here um, and have them explain a bunch of things and, and actually talk about Boston's College. I just happened to find this on the trail. It's a happy birthday balloon. This is what happens to those helium balloons when they get away from people, fly through the sky, end up in the forest sometimes. I'll bring it back and throw it away.
Okay, so I got this tree down and limbed up. So every tree that I cut, I have to approach it in a, in a, it's, it's new every time, every tree. So um, I, in this particular tree, what I choose, have chose to do, or I think I'm going to do, is so often whenever I can on these smaller trees, I like to pull them out and as one piece whenever possible. It just saves so much work if I can do that. Now I need to have the proper tray to be able to do that because you can't go around corners with a tree this long or at least not a sharp corner. So we need to make sure we're in a situation where we can pull out a full tree. So what I've done with this tree is I've actually come up here and the mills um, don't want any wood less than eight inches in diameter. So that's about what that is there and a lot of times it may have a crook or something and that's where I stop it. There's a tree back there that was really crooked that I end up leaving pretty well the, the whole end of the log in the whole light, end of the tree right in the woods because it's just not a thing I can do about it because too crooked. We're not taking pulp on this job which is good. I generally don't do pulp because there's not much money in it. A lot of times when I'm close to home a lot of the pulp is actually fairly good logs and I would actually bring it to my place but but like I said they're not um, the mill we're going to is not buying the poor quality stuff so we're hoping that some of the poor quality stuff will end up going to the Paul Smith College so the kids can learn how to saw with the poor stuff. So anyways we cut it here and we're hoping to pull this whole tree out full length but so often you think you could do something then you get back down there and you realize wow there's no way I can pull that. So I have a couple options here if I, if I can't because there's a trail right here although I might have blocked it off over there but I could always come up and grab the top log from this end, but I don't want to unless I absolutely have to. So we'll just go back down through and see what we've got here and see what it's looking like. We've got to watch out so carefully for stumps and anything like that that's going to stop us from pivoting properly. Now here's an old stump that is going to actually stop us from turning quite like we wanted to, want to. So I'm actually going to cut this stump even now. And I'll, I'll cut it at an angle so that log will easily roll up over that stump if we even get to that point of, of coming out of there. I'm not even sure what it's looking like up there. This may seem totally unnecessary, but it's surprising you take a, an old stump like this. It's still fairly solid and all it takes, sometimes all it takes is just a little bit to stop a horse from pulling a heavy load. And so I just don't want to take that chance. So that's why I'm going to take the time and cut this down low enough so it doesn't bother. Sometimes when you have a, a tree against a stump like that, there could be quite a lot of pressure against that tree. So you gotta be very careful cutting these stumps off because you can actually pinch your saw even in the cutting process. But, but that worked out fine. That allows- Yikes. This, this stump is not gonna deter, deter that from coming out of there. So we'll continue down through and see what else we have. So as I look down through here, um, one would think the best thing would be go around through there and it is possible, but I got to go around that tree and I don't want to hurt that pine tree for the same reason we talked about on the roots from earlier, earlier in this video. So what I want to do is um, cut that one balsam right here, this balsam right here, and that tree, even as long as it is, as it is will come right through there and go right down onto my trail without hurting anything. Well, you're just complaining about the balsam anyways, saying they are not very good inside. Yes, I, I need to talk to the forester and see if his thoughts are the same as I am. Generally, the balsam just does not do good up here. Down at my place, it really doesn't do good. Up here, maybe it does better, but almost all the balsam that I've been cutting have a dead center to them. So they're just, they won't live like very long anyways. So what we need to do is protect the pine. And uh, in my opinion, the more balsam I can put down, the better because it's not, it's, it's stopping other pine from growing. 
but I may be wrong. I'm curious what John's going to suggest about that. Um, this reminds me when I was on a wilderness thing, how, and we, we had to find dry firewood and these things, as long as they break, like if they break right off, it means they're dry, dry, and you can use them to start fire. So as I'm going to go out that way, I'm going to cut that balsam, but I also need to trim this stump down, this stump that's left here and cut it at an angle. So when I pull it, this log won't be um, deflected off that stump. forestry skills which is very very little just comes from observing and uh, this is not as as bad as so many of these balsam are but you can see it's kind of blackish there I mean yes that's the heart but it's also I think you'll find that it's partial rot already and I don't know I've just never had any good luck with growing decent decent um, balsam so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see what the forest is going to tell me about that. But now this allows that poultry to come right out of there without hurting anything of value. We hope. Yeah. Balsam do make nice Christmas trees. I'm going to stand up here for now. I think. Is this good? Um, by the way, Sue me messaged and said the bull's in their pasture. Let's do that. We need to get other cows loose. Let's finish up and we'll go home. Eat. 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 That's a nightmare. Oh. She hasn't messaged me back. I'll tell her we're, out. we're coming home.
You're gonna be going right, right? So I'm okay right here, right? That was pretty impressive how that came out of there. That was quite an obstacle to get through. Bye bye. So often, head that it just pays to take some extra time and look and think to figure it out back up here. To make you get right back. Bye, also pays not to have your leg between the cart and the log. This way? Limit that up and we just heard from our neighbor where our, got a, our bull is in their pasture so we gotta quit and head for home Brenda can not good yeah hey I wanted to show you guys this interesting tree right here I mean it's all rotted and everything but look at all them pine cones I don't think they're pine cones some kind of cones and something lives down that hole right there and uh, I wish you could be here to smell the uh, earth. It smells so good, so earthy. <laughs>
we headed home as soon as we got this log to the landing and thankfully the bull was in the neighbor's pasture and they were even happy to have him there because they had a cow that still needed to be bred. Good fences good, make good neighbors, but we're glad we have good neighbors anyways. Thanks for coming along with us today. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, have a great day.